So I always like to take a minute to make sure that my students understand that core electrons are still present inside of an atom, even though we may neglect them when we write out electron configurations. So a favorite question of mine is to ask how many electrons are in S subshells for calcium. When you draw out the electron configuration, normally we draw it out like this, and it's a very common answer to say there's only two. You see the 4S here, and you say it, calcium has two electrons in an S subshell. But you're forgetting that this argon actually represents quite a few electrons. So when attacking questions like what I'm going to ask in this section, there's two main ways of doing it. One is to just completely draw out the electron configuration, which is a little bit easier. So you can also look at the periodic table and understand that the electrons are being represented on it itself. So if we find calcium here, we understand that all of these uh, orbital subshells have been filled up to get to calcium. When we look at this, we see in fact that there are two, four, six, eight electrons in S subshells in calcium. We could also realize that we needed to fill all of these subshells to get to calcium, so two, four, six, eight electrons. So it's important to remember that those electrons are there. So some other questions I like to ask are about bromine. You could draw the electron configuration for bromine all the way out, or you could just look at the periodic table and answer these questions. So I ask, how many 2s electrons does bromine have? And so you can see right here, we have a 2s orbital that has two electrons in it. But I could also look at the periodic table and understand to get to bromine, this is our 2s orbital subshell that we need to fill all of these orbital subshells to get to bromine. So we have completely filled our 2s orbital subshell, so we know that there's two. Same thing with 3p. If you drew out the electron configuration completely, you can see that there's six electrons in there. Or if you realize bromine it needs to have everything filled, if you realize that bromine needs to have all the subshells filled before it, this is our 3p subshell, so we need to completely fill it to get to bromine so that we know that there are actually like three P electrons inside of bromine. If we continue on, we say how many four P electrons. So now we are getting to the orbital subshell that is in bromine's valence. So we realize that the P block here starts with n value of equal to two. So this would be three, this would be four. So bromine has one, two, three, four, five electrons in its four P subshell. Uh, also, we can ask how many 3D electrons it has. So in the electron configuration, we can see that it has 10. We can also realize that to get to our 4P subshell, we need to completely fill our 3D subshell. So we, uh, we know that it has 10 3D electrons. So another question is how many 5S electrons does it have? So when we look at the periodic table, we know that the S block starts with n is equal to one. So this would be one, two, three, four, five. And you can see that we're talking about an orbital subshell past where bromine is at. So there are no electrons in the 5s subshell for bromine. So bromine has no 5s electrons. And kind of one of my uh, last questions that I like to ask is how many electrons must bromine gain to become diamagnetic? And in this case, you need to remember what the definition of diamagnetic is. And what I like to remember is diamagnetic means that all of the subshells are filled. So when we look at bromine here, we realize that we need to completely fill the 4s orbital subshell. We need to completely fill the 3d orbital subshell and that we have not completely filled the 4s orbital subshell. So it has five electrons in its, its 4p subshell, and so it, with that, what it needs to do is gain one more electron. And in this case, it would become bromine minus two, gain a full um, 4p subshell, and to become diamagnetic.